Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of Readings in Impact Investing. My name is Daniel Rosell, and this is a new podcast which I created to take important source material, textual material in the world of impact investing, development finance, climate finance, and other kinds of finance. Finance that makes the world a better place and bring it into the format of audio through the mechanism of uh, my voice and a microphone. Couldn't AI do that? I hear you ask. And uh, I was just wondering that today and I thought, am I doing this all this effort for naught? And I said, you know what, firstly, I'm enjoying actually doing these readings. It's quite, it's, it makes it easier for me to digest this material. And uh, I have been underwhelmed by a lot of the AI voices that I've come across. I'm not saying that some aren't good, uh, but um, I like the personal uh, touch to these human voiceovers for the moment. And I also sometimes uh, interrupt these readings to jump in with a few thoughts of my own. So I will continue reading, even if there is a potentially a robot or several robots out there that could be doing this better. How's that? So today I'm going to be reading... Um, what is climate finance and why do we need more of it? This is a resource on the UNDP website and it's a good introduction to climate finance. And I just want to preview another resource I'm going to be reading, which is called the Climate Dictionary. And this is a great one. They released this in August of uh, last year, 2023. And it's just like everyday speak. It's, it's got a great little uh, subtitle to it too called Speak Climate Fluently. And uh, they give just kind of everyday definitions for all these key climate uh, climate terminologies but that's coming up so if you're interested in climate finance and if you're interested in impact investing using money to try to uh, solve our climatic problems is such a key focus uh, then uh, listen to that this uh, podcast is available on the internet at readingsandimpact.org if you put that url into a web browser uh, you will get redirect you'll get onto my link tree you'll get onto a link tree and from there, you can uh, get linked off to the podcast on the various podcasting sites like Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, and more. And uh, that's about it. Oh, and I always give my email. I give my email because I very much encourage people to get in touch with reports. You think, not just reports, any, I mean, this is actually called an explainer on the UNDP website. I found terrific reports. I found terrific blogs. I found material that is great and comes labeled in different ways. So I'm not really hung up on the labels of what I'm reading. I'm just more looking for useful material to share with my dear colleagues in the world of impact investing. So with all that intro out of the way, let's read today's uh, episode. What is climate finance and why do, you, why do we need more of it? This is by UNDP, which is the United Nations Development Programme. Summary. Climate finance refers to financial resources and instruments that are used to support action on climate change. Examples of climate finance include grants provided by multilateral funds, market-based and concessional loans from financial institutions, sovereign green bonds issued by national governments, and resources mobilised through carbon trading and carbon taxes. Investments in climate action can yield results that dramatically outweigh the upfront costs, yet significant funding gaps remain to advance the green transition and enhance resilience in developing countries. Current financial flows for climate change mitigation need to increase at least three times if we are to limit global warming to two degrees Celsius or below and achieve the Paris Agreement targets. And for sure, I will have to do another episode about the Paris Agreement and its targets. I will just need to find uh, the best resource to read. And if you have a suggestion, drop me an email. UNDP is one of the major entities supporting countries' access and effectively use climate finance. What is climate finance? Climate finance refers to financial resources and instruments that are used to support action on climate change. Climate finance is critical to addressing climate change because of the large-scale investments that are needed to transition to a low-carbon global economy and to help societies to build resilience and adapt to the impacts of climate change. Climate finance can come from different sources, public or private, national or international, bilateral or multilateral. It can employ different instruments like grants and donations, green bonds, equities, debt swaps, guarantees and concessional loans. And it can be used for different activities including mitigation, adaptation and resilience building. Just to drop in with my comment here, if you're interested in uh, green bonds, I just did a reading of a uh, UBS guide to green, sustainable and social bonds, which is, co which is commonly bucketed these days as GSSS. Uh, those are common labels for bonds and uh, how they're different than sustainability linked bonds. Not that there couldn't be climate SLBs as well as climate bonds. 
Uh, but if you're confused about what all these different labels mean in the world of uh, debt, then check out that episode. It's like two episodes back on the podcast. Some multilateral funds that developing countries can access include the Green Climate Fund, GCF, the Global Environment Facility, GEF, and the Adaptation Fund, AF. These funds were established throughout the years as financial instruments of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, that is UNFCCC, to provide resources to developing countries. As the effects of climate change are increasingly being felt in all sectors of the economy, public budgets and other financing vehicles are starting to consider climate risk in their investment decisions, further expanding the definition of climate finance. Countries like the Maldives, for example, consider all finance to be climate finance, since their entire economy and survival is so dependent on climate resilience. As such, efforts to pivot traditional development budgets to finance climate action are increasing, especially when it comes to climate change adaptation. What are some examples of climate finance? Developing countries can access some of their climate finance in the forms of grants from the GEF, the GCF and the AF. Governments and the private sector can also access market-based and concessional loans from financial institutions like the World Bank, the African Development Bank and the Inter-American Development Bank, among others. These grants and loans can be used to invest in projects that reduce, absorb or prevent greenhouse gas GHG emissions, such as renewable energy power plants, electric buses and forest conservation, or projects that build resilience to climate change, such as establishing early warning systems, increasing coastal protection, enhancing the resilience of agriculture and food systems, and building infrastructure that can withstand storms and floodings. Moreover, governments through their budgeting processes can allocate funding to priority climate actions, such as those set out in their national climate pledges, referred to as nationally determined contributions under the Paris Agreement, or issue sovereign green bonds to fund those projects. Sovereign bonds are loans that governments take from a pool of investors in exchange for regular interest payments over a certain number of years. At the end of this period, when the bond reaches maturity, the government returns the initial investment to the investors. Governments can also mobilize climate finance from carbon trading and carbon taxes. Through carbon trading, GHG emissions are quantified into carbon credits that can then be bought and sold. One tradable carbon credit equals one ton of carbon dioxide or the equivalent amount of a different GHG reduced, sequestered or avoided. Carbon credits can be bought by countries or private companies that want to enhance their GHG emissions reduction efforts. Carbon taxes are typically applied to discourage the use of products and services with big carbon footprints. For instance, a tax can be applied on gasoline at the pump or on electricity generated from fossil fuels. Proceeds from these taxes can then be used to invest in renewable energy, forest conservation and other forms of climate action. Why is finance important for climate action? Through their nationally determined contributions, NDCs, long-term climate strategies, LTSs, and national adaptation plans, NAPs, these are three different uh, types of uh, climate plans the companies put forward. Again, NDCs, LTSs, and NAPs. Countries have put forward ambitious targets to reduce GHG emissions and increase their resilience to climate change impacts. However, a recent analysis by UNDP shows that finance remains a fundamental barrier to the acceleration of climate action in developing countries. Climate action requires a large investment and many lower and income nations are simultaneously managing debt distress and multi-dimensional crises. High income countries with a significant historical contribution to climate change had committed to raising $100 billion every year by 2020 to fund climate action in lower income countries. However, this target has not yet been reached and even more funding is required to advance the green transition and enhance resilience in developing countries. But recent studies show that investments in climate action can yield results that dramatically outweigh the upfront costs. A study by the Global Commission on Adaptation found that for every $1 invested in five key adaptation areas, 2 to $10 can be realized in total net benefits. So we see a multiplier factor of 2 to 10 when we're talking about climate investments, according to the study by the Global Commission on Adaptation. And as I always remark or sometimes remark, one study leads to many studies. This is how one becomes addicted to reading studies in the world of impact investing. I will now need to chase down the that study from the Global Commission on Adaptation. At the same time, there are significant opportunities for the private sector with an estimated potential adaptation market of $2 trillion by 2026, according to the World Economic Forum. 
how much financing is needed to implement the targets of the Paris Agreement. As of 2021, financing needs identified by the NDCs of 78 countries amounted to around $5.8 trillion until 2030, or about $600 billion per year, according to an analysis by UNFCCC. This does not include the investment that developed countries must make to reduce their carbon emissions and the huge expenses that governments incur to address the impacts of extreme weather events like floods, droughts and wildfires, which are caused by climate change. This particular type of expense is being considered separately under the funding mechanism for loss and damage, which was agreed by countries at COP27 in 2022. And I hope that when we get to the uh, the climate dictionary tomorrow, hopefully loss and damage is there under L. We will have to wait to see if it is. The total global flows of climate finance, counting both private and public, domestic and international, was $640 billion as of 2020, nearly half of which was invested in East Asia and the Pacific. This figure exposes a large gap between what's required and what's actually being delivered, especially when considered within the wider financial system against other types of flows. For instance, total fossil fuel subsidies amounted to $7 trillion globally as of 2022, and we just said that the total flows of global of climate finance from both private and public sources. I just had just I'm just going to have a reread of this paragraph. Total global flows of climate finance, both private and public, everything in 2020 was 640 billion. But total fossil fuel subsidies were 7 trillion as of 2022. So the problem isn't really that hard to see that you know there is. It's not like there aren't these um, these financial flows taking place in climate finance, but they're simply. Um, not enough, um, unfortunately. According to the latest assessment report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, current financial flows for climate change mitigation need to increase between three and six times to meet average annual needs between 2020 and 2030 if we are to limit global warming to uh, two degrees Celsius or below. So this is really interesting and uh, basically... In order to, in order for us to meet this uh, climate change mitigation or containment target, the finance is actually a crucial aspect, right? It's not actually not going to happen without the necessary financial flows. So, climate finance and uh, our the general discussion about climate change mitigation are inextricably linked. Uh, we have to get climate finance up to scale in order to um, in in order to actually deliver on these on these targets. Importantly, the IPCC notes that there is sufficient global capital and liquidity to close this investment gap. So some good news. There is money there. We just need to get it moving in the right directions. The situation is even more critical when it comes to adaptation, as 90% of climate finance goes to mitigation actions, despite the strong economic rationale to invest instead in mitigation. What is UNDP doing to support countries on accessing climate finance? UNDP is one of the major entities supporting countries access finance from international sources like GEF and GCF. There are currently 377 GEF projects and 60 GCF projects under UNDP oversight, totaling $3.5 billion. UNDP also supports countries in developing national financing strategies that mobilize public and private finance for climate action and issuing bonds to raise funds for projects that contribute to implementing their NDCs and achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. In Uruguay, UNDP supported the government to issue a sovereign bond aligned to climate targets and indicators in the country's NDC. And uh, just going just gonna to reiterate NDC, just substitute climate plan. To make it simple, there obviously are as we saw earlier, a few different variants of uh, of climate plan, um, but basically we're talking about the country's individuals, individual climate plans. The Green Sukuk Initiative in Indonesia, which pioneered a type of Islamic bond, is already helping to tackle urban waste management issues by financing the revitalization of landfills. In Tunisia, UNDP supported the National Agency for Energy Management to create an investment map for both public and private investments in the energy sector, and in Lebanon, the newly launched Lebanon Green Investment Facility, LGIF, will help to channel private investments and promote blended finance mechanisms such as concessional loans, guarantees and grants from international financial institutions and development banks for climate projects. As a core member of the Adaptation Pipeline Accelerator initiative launched by the United Nations Secretary General, UNDP is also supporting Tuvalu and the Dominican Republic to scale up adaptation finance by developing projects that are attractive for public and private investment. 
In parallel, UNDP works with governments to create an enabling environment for climate finance. This may take the form of initiating policy and regulatory reforms, improving readiness for engaging in Article 6 of the Paris Agreement, reviewing public and private expenditures, building capacity on increasing climate finance, and fostering engagement with the public sector. UNDP supported Namibia to develop a carbon market framework to attract foreign investments through carbon credit sales. In addition, this collaboration introduced the first national carbon registry system for carbon credit registration and issuance in Southern Africa. In Latin America and the Caribbean, the adoption of the taxonomy common framework will serve as a key catalyst for boosting international capital flows towards low carbon projects. Through the Climate Finance Network, UNDP has developed tools for climate public expenditures and institutional review and climate budget tagging. These tools are currently supporting the Philippines to include gender and social inclusion considerations into the climate expenditures tracking system. UNDP's approach for assessing investments and financial flows has also been used across the world, including in Thailand, to understand what is needed to climate-proof transport infrastructure. In Armenia, the carbon pricing possibilities in Armenia's study has laid the foundation for the country to engage in carbon markets. Finally, looking forward. Finance will continue to be at the heart of the climate change debate for the foreseeable future. It is dominating all the forums where heads of state meet, including the G7 and G20, as well as through important efforts like the Bridgetown Initiative. The call for major economies to shoulder their fair share of responsibility, particularly in the areas of loss and damage financing, debt restructuring and relief, and adaptation financing is getting louder. As catastrophic climate events are becoming more frequent, the need for substantial financial commitments to support vulnerable nations in their fight against climate change has reached a critical juncture. UNDP remains committed to assisting countries in accessing and effectively using climate finance by helping nations identify their financial requirements and mobilise resources through innovative mechanisms such as green bonds, carbon markets, climate risk insurance and debt swaps, UNDP will continue to play a pivotal role in the global effort to combat climate change. So that was uh, today's reading from uh, the United Nations Development Programme, better known as UNDP. Uh, I think a lot of good information there for climate finance, what it is and why we need more of it. And as I mentioned, teaser uh, preview, going to be reading the Climate Dictionary. Really looking forward to that one. Uh, hopefully tomorrow or if not tomorrow in the coming days. So if you're interested in that stuff, keep an eye out. If you've enjoyed this podcast or you are enjoying this podcast, uh, do please consider sharing the link with uh, your colleagues or just other folks you know if you're interested in impact investing, development finance and uh, mobilizing capital flows and money for good to make the planet a better, more sustainable place. Thanks a lot for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please also do consider uh, dropping a review on whatever podcasting platform you're using. It also helps to spread the word. And until the next episode, this has been me, Daniel Rosell, wishing you a good day.